Nancy Mace recently went on CNN after winning her own primary and got lit up for a possible ethics violation, unfounded claims of Biden audio not matching the transcripts, and also exposed some of her own shortcomings in the process. So I thought, why not look at some of these to highlight the more common talking points you hear from right-wing pundits. I've worked extremely hard to earn the trust and the support of South Carolina voters. But also what it says is that there's a place for people like me and the Republican Party. I marched the beat of my own drum. I tend to be very fiscally conservative, socially sensible. Uh, there's a place for me. There's a place for MAGA. There's a place for centrists. There's a place for right of center. There's a place for women in our party, even vocal women. I've been very vocal on women's issues. Now, what this really means is that her district is still horrendously gerrymandered. Just a year ago, the court in the district ruled that it was racially gerrymandered with the specific purpose of discrimination and ruled that they need to redraw it. This is the only way that Republicans can win victories when they can't rely on the Electoral College is to draw the districts in ways that disproportionately favor those who will always vote for them while disenfranchising women in the black vote. And her victory here just shows nothing has changed. I mean, actually, they specifically and deliberately took inaction in redrawing the districts because they knew if they just pushed it off long enough, the election would still have to continue forward with a district that would favor Republicans. When you hear that the transcript might not match the audio tapes, you'd want to verify that information and requesting the audio tapes is not an unusual thing. But where is that coming from? I haven't heard that there is a discrepancy between what was said. Mm -hmm. It wasn't favorable by the special counsel, Robert right. Kerr, about no, Biden. No, not at all. So where is, the, where is it coming from if there is a discrepancy between what was said and how it's said? Well, I mean, take, for example, oversight last year. We had this 1023 document. The mm -hmm. FBI said that the witness was was trustworthy and credible six months later, says that they're not trustworthy and credible. So being able to verify the information, being able to verify the transcript, is something we should be doing to make sure the information we are getting is truthful. Now let's first expose Republican hypocrisy. We can't believe anything that special counsel Jack Smith says because he's a Democrat appointed by Democrats. So that means it's politically motivated. However, Robert Hur, a Republican and Trump appointee negatively reports on Biden and it should be taken with the utmost belief. We have to believe every single word he says. It is a clear contradiction to pretend that one is valid and one is invalid, but I digress. As to what she's saying here, a 1023 is literally a document for an unverified and raw report from a source, which means they would absolutely then go in and fact check and try to verify the validity and it's subject to change. This is different from the transcript of an interview between a special counsel and anyone who is under investigation. They just want to keep pushing this narrative for a few reasons. One, to pretend that Biden has something to hide and two, to keep trying to get more and more and more so they can use it again. Them. Oh, did he stutter in the audio? Oh, did he did he look away? Did he do this? Did he do that? And next they would want the video. Then they'd want public interviews. And it would the line would never stop if they keep pushing it forward. When in reality, this is just in accordance to how they handle all investigations. Matt Gates literally touched children and they haven't released anything from that investigation. And there is not a peep from Republicans calling for all of that to be released. It's clearly all just politically motivated on their side. I'm sure you've seen the New York Times report or mm -hmm. discussion talking about re records that were reviewed mm -hmm. that suggests that there is um, that you own a townhouse in Washington the records that were reviewed mm -hmm. seem to suggest that you repaid 23,000 plus dollars in lodging costs that that includes expenses for insurance and taxes mm -hmm. and also months bills for the townhouse there is um, a discussion whether an ethics probe is warranted based mm -hmm. on the repayment or reimbursement of, of those fees that would be tied to home ownership. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us about this investigation? Are you presently the subject of one? I haven't, I haven't heard anything about it uh, so far. Again, I've been focused on my race, mm -hmm. but I will tell you, I follow all the ethics rules and all of our ethics guidelines. I'm one of about 300 members of Congress that rely on lodging per diem to help us live in DC to do our jobs. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second thing is, this was a last minute Hail Mary hit job done the weekend before our primary on Tuesday. Now, do you think that she'll be calling for all the audio and video and transcripts to be released from her own investigation once they get in the thick of it? What the scoop of this is, is Congress members who don't live in DC, they have a reimbursement fund for up to $34,000 a year for the expenses they incur while they're in Washington. They can get reimbursed for those for lodging and food and things such as. Nancy Mace herself was repaid around $23,000 for expenses directly related to her lodging. However, the 
problem is it's for her townhouse in Washington, D.C., of which Nancy Mace partially owns along with her fiance, which means she's clearly not allowed to seek reimbursement for any of those expenses. So what she's doing is dipping her hand in the cookie jar and stealing money from the working class, taking from taxpayer dollars. This doesn't sound as much of a political hit job to me as just a clear cut ethics violation. I work on a little, lot of civil rights issues. Mm -hmm. I was the ranking member on the civil rights subcommittee last session on oversight. Uh, due process is a really important issue. Sure. But when we uh, it was a very beautiful speech uh, by the gentle lady um, who, as she mentioned, was uh, helped lead on the majority, the now majority side, um, civil rights and civil liberties su subcommittee. But I think it's so exemplary of the point that she also oversaw the elimination of the civil rights subcommittee on this committee, which really kind of gives the whole game away. We show up, we give speeches, we give flowery words, but at the end of the day, participate in the structural erosion of the rights and representation of people uh, that, that are marginalized, women, people of color, people that just need to see their due process and civil liberties protected in this country. But I will move on. For Nancy Mason Republicans, it's all about the Instagram picture lifestyle. And what I mean by that is she just wants something she can go into these interviews and boast about, try to score points. She can make social media posts about to appeal to people. But the second that Republicans had the majority in the power, she voted with all of them to remove the committee, showing that none of them really valued its, its existence. Its creation was from Democrats when they were in the majority. Majority. And again, as soon as Mace had the power, she deemed it no longer necessary, which as AOC said, it really just gives the game away for Republican motives as they want to erode things. They want to take things away that remove structural and systemic bias and racism, while at the same time trying to appeal to the community that those things affect. It's sickening, really.